Hello and welcome to RSNA 2014. My name is Brian Casey. I'm Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. We have with us today Dr. Elliot Fishman. He is Professor of Radiology at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, Dr. Fishman, thanks for being with us today. It's a real pleasure. Now, um, you've been involved in a pretty interesting venture in addition to your, your day job at Hopkins. Uh, you've been involved in a pretty interesting venture, uh, ctsus.com. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? It's been around for quite some time and, and uh, is, is become a, a very powerful and, and useful resource about CT. Right. Um, we've been doing it for 15 years, actually, and it's it really was based on what we've always done, which is education. I've run CME courses for Hopkins for 32 years now, and when the web started getting popular, we thought perhaps that would be a very good way for us to really share our information. And the goal of what we've done all the 15 years is really to share how we do CT, how to read CT, how to understand CT across the world. Uh, so it's a very simple goal, and I think it's, it's worked well because, you know, we're not selling anything, we're not charging anything, we're not buying anything, but it's a way of just sharing information. And, and what we, and I've done CT my entire career, so it's something of a... Uh, sharing and a payback to help other people. Great. And now with the rise of social media, you guys are pretty active on social media. Now, what, what sort of things have you learned from social media that you might be able to share with the rest of the radiology community? Well, I think the social media idea, you know, people don't really know what social media is or they think it's a lot of different things. Sometimes they think it's unprofessional. One of the things we found is so many people are on social media, whether it's patients, whether it's referring physicians, whether it's radiologists, it's really a good way of connecting people, connecting, providing information, whether it's cases or it's case studies, whether it's interesting material, whether it's just sharing our experience in a very positive way. And I think one of the things I've seen just for the two days I've been in RSNA is there's so much interest in social media, not only from an ed educational perspective, peer to peer, but also how we relate to patients. Patients are on social media. That's what they all do. And so we need to be there also in a way of getting the message of radiology is important, that radiology cares, that we're looking at doing the best for our patients. So I think it's very important for radiologists to get very involved in social media in a very positive way. Do you think radiologists are getting that message, or do they think social media is just something that their teenage daughter does? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of that. I think, you know, you're right. I think people are a little bit afraid. I think maybe it's an age-related thing. I think if you speak to uh, residents and fellows, they're very comfortable on social media. Not a surprise. If you speak to more senior faculty, it's kind of like, oh, my God, what am I doing? How do I do this? And there's a little bit of a fear about uh, giving too much information or too little. I think one of the things you're going to see, because there is that danger of, you know, HIPAA violation, and that's what everyone worries about, there'll be more rules and a little bit more guidelines of social media going forward. And I think, I think that'll be helpful. I mean, some places, you know, Mayo Clinic, for example, is outstanding in social media, and it's been very good for their brand. And I think more and more hospitals we see, Hopkins and other places, private groups, are really looking at social media as a way of branding, whether it's breast cancer, whether it's lung cancer screening, a way of being a very positive force of information. Now, do you think radiology departments, should they assign someone particularly in the department to handle the social media? Should they coach different radiologists in how to set up their own accounts and handle that? I think a little bit of both. We did a little bit of conferencing last year at Hopkins about that. I think at the end of the day, my feeling is whatever you do in a department, unless you have a champion, it never happens. If you have a meeting and 12 people agree to do it, my experience is nothing will happen. You need to have a champion who will be the one driving it, and I think other people will follow. If you just rely on everybody, let's all share in this. That sounds really democratic, but it's usually just totally fails. So I think you need someone who's really passionate, who wants to do it, and I think others will follow. But I think you need to have someone really leading the way. Yeah. Any particular do's and don'ts, maybe like big no-nos in social media. I'm, I'm imagining discussing patient cases is probably a big no-no. Yeah, anything that would make it seem like you cannot say, I saw this great case today of this patient, this really unusual mass. That's like super no-no. I mean, it's one thing to show that I have interesting pancreatic cases. You have to be very careful that there's no way you can trace anything to a patient or someone could misunderstand. I mean, all of those HIPAA rules are magnified online. And we all know that once something's posted, you can't say, oh, delete. 
It's there forever. And so you have to learn that if in doubt, don't do it. Yeah. You know, it's very, very careful. So it is, if you have a particular case you're having trouble with, you, you're saying social media is probably not the best forum for that, maybe a, a, a different type of avenue to, to get guidance on that? Right, I think if you have a difficult case and you want someone's opinion, just people always email me cases or email other people's cases one-to-one. -one. I would not recommend putting a case online and saying, anyone know what this is? I saw it this morning, I have no idea. That's probably like a super no-no. Mm -hmm. And it's also important to remember that everything you put there is forever. Uh, my son works for the mayor in New York, and he does a lot of the venting on employees, yeah. potential employees. And they look at your social media account, and if you have a lot of things that are questionable, you're not going to be working for, in many places. Yeah. And that's becoming more and more common. Yeah. One of the things I find is the, uh, the best thing to do is maybe wait five minutes before you post. If you, you see something that you disagree with or kind of get your blood boiling, just wait a couple minutes and come back to it when you're a little cooler before you reply. Yeah, I think probably a good rule perhaps is don't reply to anything that's controversial. I think, as you're right, you're 100% right, never reply in anger, but that's true with any email. Yep. Because emails always sound worse than they really are, so that's one thing. But I think social media from a physician perspective, it's sharing information, like for example, saying lung cancer screening is coming. You know. Should you, you know, here are the rules, you know, patient over age 55 to 74, 30 pack years. Information, not controversial. Don't say, you know, uh, well, if you made the mistake in your whole life and you smoked, well, here's a chance to do something better. Right. You don't want to say it that way. So it's more being informative, being helpful. You know, did you get your breast cancer screening this year? If you're over 50, did you get colonoscopy virtual or otherwise? Things that are very positive, which no one's going to argue about. I think that's what social media works well for radiologists, for physicians. I think at this point, particularly when you're getting started, you know, be very strict. Don't any, do not start getting into things that may be borderline because you're going to make a, a mistake. So yep. just play it safe. Great. Stay positive. Play it safe. Good advice for anything. Good, yeah. Always, always good advice. And also, I think that's what people want to see. I think it's it's still a professional aspect of what you do, and people expect you to be professional. So, you know, you don't go up there and say we have the best CT in town. The rest of the guys suck. I mean, right. I mean maybe you think that, and maybe you're right, but you probably wouldn't say that online. I, you know, I think you might say is you know we're excellent at what we do, and uh, CT is very positive. We do low dose. You know, we. We're all well trained, we're all board certified, we're all expertise, that's great, but stay with the positives. And uh, I think that'll, that's a good rule to live by. All right, very good. Well, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. Signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.